everyone. Welcome back to another episode of our Tech Connect series, where we bring diverse and dynamic perspectives from all corners of the technology world through thought-provoking questions and conversation. Today, I'm joined by Nancy Hawkins, who is the VP of Product Management for our tax research products here at Thomson Reuters. Nancy, welcome, and thank you for being here today. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy to be joining you in, uh, in one of these. Um, you know, I, I've seen the last few episodes, and I know that the focus has been around cutting edge technologies and how they are improving efficiencies for our customers. And David, when I think about efficiencies uh, in the tax industry, especially given the staffing shortages, the uptick in retirements, you know, efficiencies is so important and a huge driver for the development of our tax tools. Now we know from our research that customers are prioritizing these efficiency gains um, and you know, looking to technology to really help them unlock them. Uh, can you share a bit about what you're seeing and hearing when it comes to the increased importance around having you know, Gen AI or, or other technologies embedded in our products? Yeah, I mean, you just started with a pretty big topic there. I mean, efficiency <laughs> in professional services is sort of like the theme of the day. And uh, we recently did our future professionals report where we surveyed uh, all professionals that Thompson Reuters serves. So legal, tax and accounting, audit, risk and fraud. And I think in contrast to a year ago where we had probably the most excitement, the most interest from the legal industry, this year in 2024, we've had, I think, a much clearer signal from the tax accounting and audit industry that they are kind of ready and eager to apply some of the AI technology to their work to seek efficiencies. So I think that's one thing. I mean, I think the other thing, though, is, you know, as you mentioned, the tax and accounting um, industry has a pretty big challenge right now because of this labor labor crunch. There's not as there's not enough CPAs, there's not enough people who are willing to jump into the tax and accounting profession. And so technology is seen as this sort of like savior for the, mm -hmm. this ever growing pile of work within the industry. Um, and AI, I think, is just one of many tools. So one thing that I think is interesting about tax and accounting is that this industry has applied technology for decades to the workflow, to the application of the work, et cetera. And in many ways, tax accounting is pretty efficient already. And there's a lot of data tools, a lot of systems out there already, which help to make tax accounting efficient. I think AI is one additional uh, set of tools, which are going to help you know, the industry kind of get to a new frontier of automation, uh, hopefully make people's lives better, busy seasons a little bit less intense, et cetera. But I think this is an it's an interesting it's an interesting state because AI has to work in conjunction with a lot of other technologies which are pretty heavily used and pretty heavily sort of depended on uh, especially in workflows. You know, when I think about the the research area which you know is is um, the products that that I uh, run that I lead uh, where we are, I think about the fact that most tax professionals are not attorneys, right? And they, um, you know, they, they didn't go to law school. They didn't have the training in legal research. Yet the exacting nature of the tax profession is extremely unforgiving when it comes to inaccuracies or mistakes. And so I do feel like, um, as we put our AI assisted research together, we really had that in mind and to help with uh, making research more efficient for, you know, I, I think about the new entrants into the industry. We've talked about the crunch. Um, many of those new entrants don't have tax and accounting experience. Many are coming from different fields. Uh, I've met a lot of folks coming from the education uh, field into tax and accounting. And so having an efficient way to research, I think, is critical. And the AI-assisted research that we have in Checkpoint really allows someone to come in, not make any decisions up front, and simply ask a question like you would to uh, a trusted colleague down the hall and get an answer back that is easily digestible, uh, something that you know someone can understand and 
send off to a client or send off to a colleague. And then I think about, I hear a lot from our customers around the fact that the, the senior members of the firm, they want to be coaching, they want to be mentoring, but there's just no time, so much is asked of them. And so being able to really upskill more junior members of a firm quickly to have the more kind of mature and robust conversations around tax topics is something that you know we're hearing from our customers. Um, they very much are excited about with, uh, with our AI-assisted research. When, uh, when you think about tax professionals can, um, you know, integrating AI into their, their daily workflows, how do you think they can do so effectively? And are there any resources or training that you think are necessary to, you know, really help them maximize the benefit of that? No, it's, it's interesting. I, I think that some of the things you shared around how tax research is so core to the way that many of these tax professionals work, mm -hmm. but tax research has been sort of uh, almost like cobbled together, right? So people just try to figure out what's the best way to get answers. And sometimes people rely on you know, Google search. Some people rely on professional products like Checkpoint, et cetera. Um, and so uh, I, 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 I've observed, and I think you've probably seen the same with our customers, that I think uh, we have a very sort of pragmatic and also a pretty, uh, 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 pretty creative group of customers uh, in how they, they try to get information because I think tax research in particular moves quickly. Yes, there's long standing there's long standing principles that you have to be trained on, mm -hmm. but the law changes every single every single year in some cases, even more frequently at times as rules and and and, uh, and judgments are are rendered. Mm -hmm. And so, sort of a long way of saying that. Uh, I think for training, I think the the best thing possible is to get your hands on some of these tools and. Uh, even if it's the publicly available products, I, I think that learning how to use generative AI is like learning uh, a new fluency of technology, mm. just like how it took everyone a while to get, get used to how to use Excel, how to use PowerPoint, how to use email, how to use text and IM efficiently and effectively. All those things took time. And the best way was to actually just start to get your hands on it. And so uh, even if a customer doesn't have access to Checkpoint Edge with co-counsel, which we all want. <laughs> we all want our customers to have handle on. Um, I think you'll learn a ton just by using some of the publicly available generative AI tools uh, to be able to get an understanding of how the systems behave, how to ask questions effectively, how to understand and interpret the results. And so I think that's a good starting point. I think from there, then I think there is a step to then look at some of the professional grade solutions like Checkpoint Edge with co-counsel and co-counsel more generally to see, okay, how do I start to apply this after I have some fluency in the technology into my day-to-day -day work? Now, uh, we've been working on Checkpoint Edge with co-counsel for some time, uh, and I'm really, really excited about uh, its, its launch. And so, Nancy, can you just share a little bit more about what's really unique about mm. you know, this, this capability about Checkpoint with, with co-counsel, and how is it different? You know, again, if you were to compare and contrast versus like a chat GPT or a Gemini or a copilot, what's different and you know, what makes what makes Checkpoint special? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, when we were in the beta phase uh, of our customer research, I heard one customer say, and this really stuck with me, uh, he said, what I do um, is specialized. So why wouldn't I want a specialized you know, Gen AI research um, system. And so I think it does come down to our content. And if you would ask me what, you know, what differentiates Checkpoint full stop, you know, from, from other research platforms, I would have said the same thing. But it, it really is the content that is created, yes, by outside experts and also by the internal experts we have who have you know, deep domain expertise and their various um, areas of, of tax and accounting that they worked in before coming to Thomson Reuters. And so, you know, having that, that human in the loop, because not only do they create our content, but these experts also work with our amazing data scientist team, you know, our, our product team, to make sure that we are producing Gen AI of a quality that is 
rightfully called, you know, professional grade. And so I, I yeah. think that that is uh, a major differentiator. I will say an, another differentiator, um, especially with some of the publicly available uh, methods that are out there, is the ability to quickly validate uh, the accuracy of the response coming back. And that we've heard from customers, uh, our UI is extremely intuitive and allows for uh, our customers to not only quickly validate, but then once they're in one of the resources that made up the Gen AI answer, because of the deep linking we have, they can get to, frankly, any on-point resource that Checkpoint has on their topic. And so uh, that's something that our customers are really excited about as well. So Nancy, just maybe just to add, add, dig a bit deeper into that question around Checkpoint. So much of the tax law is publicly available. Like the tax law is available publicly. You can go to the IRS, the state authorities to be able to get the different forms and their guidance. So when you compare and contrast Checkpoint with a Google search or you know, the source material from you know, these, these authorities, what makes Checkpoint, you know, special? What makes it different? Yeah. Um, so I think a couple of things. One is the, like, finding the answer in the tax law is difficult. You, you know, typically you start in the code, then you look at the promulgating regulations, and then you look to see if there are, you know, cases on point, uh, IRS rulings or IRS opinions that come out. So it's it is not straightforward, right? It can be really difficult. So when you come into Checkpoint, you're already starting with synthesized analysis from our editorial team. And so right. that really helps, I think, get um, that easy to understand uh, response back, plus being able to, to validate. So there's that piece, but there's also the way that we ground the Gen AI in our content. So yes, you're getting um, the, the trusted content that our customers enjoy today, and you don't have to worry about kind of everything else <laughs> coming back uh, that you know existed on the internet for large swaths of time. So you can really trust mm -hmm. what you're getting back. I think those are kind of the two big pieces I'd say differentiate us from uh, the, the publicly available Gen AI out there. Got um, it, got it. So you have to stitch it together. It's not obvious, the, the facts are not just evident, right, for a particular issue. And it also sounds like that there is sort of this difference between sort of book smarts and, and street smarts here, where, you know, when you actually apply it, it's different than just knowing what the answer is to a factual question. There's a challenge of how do you actually apply it to a particular scenario? And, you know, check one has a lot of that practical guidance around how to Absolutely. You know, sort of that particular situation. Um, you know, when, when you think about it, David, what do you think are the best mechanisms to ensure accuracy when it comes to our, our tax professionals and, and using Gen AI? Well, I mean, accuracy is probably the biggest concern. It's one of, certainly one of the biggest concerns from our research uh, mm -hmm. around the use of some of these tools. Uh, as we all know, Gen AI systems can hallucinate. They can be very confidently wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and so making sure that you're, again, grounding as well as uh, providing these systems with the right information is super important. Now, I think the first is make sure you do have the right law, the latest update, updated law and the latest updated guidance uh, as part of that source information. Because if you do just a general, you know, Google search or you do a general search across um, the tax law, you don't know if you're getting the 2023, 2024, 2021, 20. 20 and older and older and older <laughs> tax law because you know you can just search for an issue and so make sure that you understand the the relevance and the again the currency of the the law is 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 paramount to any type of research i think the second thing is making sure that again on top of the search is that you have uh the the relevant sort of human in the loop to validate mm -hmm. and, and to check the results of these systems so uh, while you might be furnishing the right information to the systems, you have to make sure that the analysis and the interpretation of that information is done correctly. Uh, and that's where I think the editorial team that we have at, at Thomson Reuters is really uniquely positioned to be able to, again, validate and check the systems. So uh, when we have launched any of our knowledge and any of our research systems, we have an army of people do mm -hmm. 
feedback and validation of the answers where we create real life questions and then batter those systems, right? To be able to say, okay, what about this? What about this? What about this question? What about this scenario repeatedly so that we can quantify and understand the, the quality and the accuracy and performance of these systems before we make them available. And so we all know that Gen AI systems are not perfect, but it's so much more helpful when you know how perfect or how imperfect they are and on what types of questions they perform well, what type of questions do you might have to check a little bit more. So that's what we're trying to do at, at Thomson Reuters. When we think of a professional grade AI, it's one, quality has to be very high, but on top of it, quality needs to be quantified. And so we want to make sure that our customers really understand, uh, again, where is the bar and also uh, how how much extra work do they need to do to be able to check or to validate uh, or in what case can they trust it because it's very likely to be correct. So um, quite a lot, again, very exciting. We are so thrilled with the, the availability of these tools and the potential for uh, tax and accounting professionals to use use them. So. With that, I mean, Nancy, this has been a great conversation. And we've, we've come to time with all of these conversations. Uh, they just fly by. And it's been really great to speak to you today. I appreciate you take, taking the time to give us some insights and best practices around some of these task complexities. Any last thoughts you want to share with the audience before we sign off? Um, just that this is only the beginning. And, and I'm really excited to see where um, we can really you know, make the entire workflow efficient for our tax customers. So um, just uh, a lot to look forward to. I couldn't agree more. I mean, knowledge is the foundation for everything else that we do. So getting that research and that knowledge layer, right, will allow us to do all that exciting additional work for workflow and for other efficiency. So couldn't agree more. So again, to all of you out there, thank you for joining us for another episode of Tech Connect. And uh, we'll be back uh, for another one. Uh, soon. So thank you so much for joining us.